In this video, we'll use the three steps to sketch method for shifted cosecant graphs to graph y equals cosecant of x plus pi over 2. So we know we have a shift because we see that plus pi over 2 in the parentheses with the x, and so we know we can use this shifted cosecant method. So here is the template. This is a somewhat involved process, but once you use this method and stay organized a couple of times, you will become an expert at graphing these shifted cosecant graphs. So here's our equation in a grid, and we're going to jump right in. So step one is our biggest step. It's where we really do our organization. Um, and what we do is we find our companion equation and its essential information. So we know that sine will be the companion equation for cosecant because they're reciprocals. Note that our equation is in the general form for shifted cosecant graphs, y equals a cosecant of bx minus c plus d. So our companion equation is going to be basically our equation, but just replace the cosecant with sine. So it's going to be y equals sine of x plus pi over 2. Remember that the big idea for this method is we will graph the companion equation, shift it as needed, and then we'll take the reciprocal or we'll create the reciprocal graph based on the relationships we know between sine and cosecant. All right, so we're analyzing this companion equation, our base graph. We need to identify a, which of course is that understood coefficient in front of sine, the understood one. Okay, that'll help us place some of our companion pattern in step two. We see that b is the coefficient of x. Okay, another understood one that tells us one cycle of our graph should happen between zero and two pi. And we can also calculate the period. Remember, that's just 2 pi over b, so just simply 2 pi here. That's the length of a horizontal cycle. All right now, we can go ahead and set some scale labels. For the horizontal scale, we're very intentional. We want to take the period and divide by 4. This ensures that to start our companion pattern, everything will align nicely, and that makes the shifting a whole lot easier as well. So take 2 pi, divide it by 4, and we know that that's pi over 2. So that's how we'll label our horizontal tick marks. And for our vertical axis, we'll just count by ones. So let's take a moment and get our grid labeled. All right, so start with the horizontal axis, counting by pi over two. We have one pi over two, two pi over two, reduces to pi, three pi over two, four pi over two, reduces to two pi, five pi over two. And then of course, the negative part of the horizontal axis will be all the same values, but just with negative signs. So taking a moment to get those values labeled. And finally, negative 5 pi over 2. And then just count by 1s to get that vertical axis labeled. All right, easy enough. Here we go. All right, so now back over to step 1 in our analysis. We're ready to talk about our shifts. So notice that our shifts are C over B. Those are your horizontal or phase shifts. And D, which we don't actually have a D term here, um, but D would be a vertical shift. So let's go ahead and note we don't have that. And we do want to be a little bit careful in identifying our C term here. Notice that, and we're looking at this companion equation here, notice that we have a plus sign within the parentheses, but our general form is always BX minus C. So really in your mind, you should be thinking about this as X minus negative pi over two. So your C term is negative pi over two. Okay, that's important, um, knowing that we will shift to the left for our phase shift or our horizontal shift. And you probably will get used to the point seeing x plus pi over 2 and just knowing that's a shift left, um, but that is an explanation of why. Okay, so again, c for b, that's the phase shift. So we have negative pi over 2 over 1. So our shift here for our horizontal shift is just left pi over 2. So you can write negative pi over 2 maybe write yourself a reminder, we should be moving that companion graph left in the next step. So the last thing we want to do in step one is find the asymptotes equation. I like going ahead and doing this now because as you create your reciprocal graph, your final graph in step three, you'll have kind of a double check. You'll know where you're expecting those asymptotes. So it's a very easy way to find your asymptotes equation. Simply go up to your cosecant equation take the inputs or the horizontal transformations and set those equal to zero plus pi k. 
So we have x plus pi over 2 equal to 0 plus pi k. Now I'll put a link um, to a playlist that has better explanation or more detailed explanation about finding the asymptotes for cosecant graphs. But right now I think it's enough to note that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, like we've said, and we know that the zeros of sine x happen at 0 and pi. And the reciprocal of 0, of course, is undefined. And that's why we have vertical asymptotes at 0 plus pi k. Remember, k is just an integer here. So substituting in different integers will get you different asymptotes. But all we have to do from here is isolate the x, so subtract pi over 2 from both sides, and we'll find, and I'll just write this down here, if we subtract pi over 2 from both sides, we end up with x equals negative pi over 2 plus pi k. That term doesn't change because it's not a like term. And this is our asymptotes equation. So substituting in different values for k, I usually like to substitute in 0 first just because it's a very simple calculation, we should expect an asymptote at x equals negative pi over 2. Substitute in k is 1. Simplify. We should expect another happening at positive pi over 2. If you let k equal negative 1, there should be one at negative 3 pi over 2, and so on. Okay, so this equation can be so helpful in that double check. All right, so now we've done a lot of the work. We've done the analysis. We're ready for step two. We're going to plot our companion pattern and then shift. Okay, so I'm going to use a light color. Be sure that you're marking lightly or using a separate color. This is not our final graph. It's just our helper to get what we need in step three. So recall a sign pattern is just going to be starting at the origin with a zero or an x-intercept up to a maximum, another x-intercept, and then a minimum. So let's mark these lightly. We start at the origin. Our maximum happens at that first horizontal tick mark and the y value comes from our value a. So look back up here. We see our y value is going to be positive one. We have another zero at the next horizontal tick mark. And then we have at the third one, a minimum. The y coordinate comes from the opposite value of a. Okay, so this is the unshifted companion equation. And do note how nicely these points aligned with our horizontal scale. We did this on purpose so that these first points would be placed very nicely and it will make our shifting easier in, I would say, 95% of cases. All right, so now we're ready to apply our shifts. We simply have a shift left pi over 2. We don't have any vertical shifting, but we could do both of these at the same time if we did have that. And of course, we'll work more examples like that in the future. So take each of your light dots from your companion unshifted sign and just move them to the left pi over 2. All right, I'm going to mark these with x's. This is still not quite the final graph, but move each of those points left pi over 2. All right, so that's step two taken care of. We're ready for step three, where we understand the relationship between the sign and the cosecant graphs. This is the reciprocal step or recip. And so we're going to transition each of these key points. So our first, we're starting from the left. That original 0, 1 becomes a vertical asymptote. I called it asymptote 1 in the method video. Okay, then we take our maximum point from our companion sine graph that was shifted. And that point is actually going to become our local minimum in our cosecant graph. Okay, the second 0, 0, 2 becomes asymptote 2. And then our minimum from our original sign pattern that was shifted will become our local maximum for our cosecant graph. So we'll sketch in this cycle, have your graph curving along those vertical asymptotes. Okay, and we don't have an asymptote there yet, but we know this is what a cosecant graph looks like. There you have one cycle of cosecant x plus pi over 2. Now all you have to do is repeat this pattern for as many cycles as you want. So we have asymptote local minimum, asymptote, and that's all the room we have on this side. So we have a half cycle additionally. And then let's work backwards. So we have a local maximum here, following along that asymptote. We talked about this asymptote at negative three pi over two, and notice that negative pi over two and pi over two were additional ones that we talked about when we said that asymptotes equation. All right, local minimum, and another asymptote. So do play around with that asymptotes equation. 
see how you plug in different values of k to get all of these asymptotes. I think that's a really good exercise. But here we have two and a half cycles of y equals cosecant x plus pi over 2. Uh, one quick note before we finish up. Um, know that this method for a very simple shifted cosecant graph maybe isn't the quickest way to do it. I think if you know the graph of cosecant x, you can simply just take that graph and shift it to the left pi over 2. Of course, that would be much faster. But as you start to tackle graphs of very complex shifted cosecant graphs, this method ends up keeping you much more organized and accurate for your final sketch. All right, that is all there is to it. Be sure to check out the links in the video description. There will be um, playlists for more examples on cosecant. Um, check out that playlist for more on the asymptotes equation as well. And I'll also post how to graph all the other trig functions and lots of examples of that. Thanks so much for watching.